focus of God. But before I get into that, so we've had this team in house and going out in the city, and uh, they've been here since Sunday. No, Friday. Since Friday. And uh, there's a few more testimonies I'd like to hear tonight before we get into the message. So Dustin's going to help me with that, and uh, it's going to be good. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. I, um, all right, I'm just going to get AC and Miss Tara and Nanette, and <clears throat> where's Nick? Nick, will you come? I, man in the booth. Amen. Um, we. And hang on just a second. Okay, I just had to double check, make sure I get the right. Okay, so we, this team, um, uh, team got here on. Oh, uh, sorry. Okay, the team got here on Friday. What am I doing? Uh, I thought. I, <laughs> thought you, okay. <laughs> I was like, man, what I got? Got. We did just eat some pizza a while ago, so I didn't know if I had a pepperoni or something here. Um, <laughs> no, but the team came on um, Friday around lunchtime, and we've been on the streets basically from about 9.30 in the morning till about 9.30 at night besides taking breaks for lunch and dinner, And um, but it, it's been great. We've been training. A lot of people from the church have come out and, um, and joined us, and we've been able to uh, see a lot of breakthrough in that, and so we got testimony from some of them tonight. Um, but we have, praise God, been able to lead uh, 2,300, no, 2,295 people in the prayer of salvation since we got, uh, or since we started on Friday afternoon, amen? Um, pretty aw awesome stuff, um, but uh, Miss Danette, uh, she has been hosting the team. She's been a huge blessing to us. Um the uh, we're very thankful, you know, to uh, that you've opened your home. She's opened her home to us. We've been having a lot of meals over there. Uh, the ladies have been been staying there, and it's been phenomenal. We're all gaining weight. We haven't haven't missed any meals at all. But um, but uh, tell everybody, tell, tell people what what happened. What your okay? First of all, was. going out isn't my thing, like like a lot of people. Um, but my pastor said that God would meet you. And I decided to put my toe in the water just a little bit. And, and God does really meet you. I, uh, a compassion comes on you, and you want to do it. You want to do it. You don't want to see that person go to hell. You want to hear them, you, you know, give them an opportunity to hear the gospel. And, um, and when you open your mouth, guess what? <laughs> God meets you and, you, and you talk, and I didn't uh, fumble the script. Yeah. And uh, I was able to roll with the punches when I forgot somebody's name. Then I got my friend in there if I didn't, you know, get their name or pronounce it right. And so um, it is a lot easier than you think it'll be. And the, um, the presence of the Lord, I could feel it. Uh, I could feel it when I was doing it and, and praying for people. And I was just so happy to be able to pray for people. And I prayed for other needs, too, not just the, not just the little script card. And... Um, the reward is the reward you get is just um, I don't know, just a big blessing. Amen. Now, would you recommend this for other people? I would re recommend <laughs> it for people, even as um, as as why well, you even as not bold as I used to be. Amen. So. Amen. You know, uh, I, if you take this gospel twice a day. It'll change your life. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Miss Nanette. Thank you so much for hosting us. Now, uh, this is Mr. AC. He's, uh, he is with the uh, uh, River Gulf Coast. He's off the chain. I mean, we have had the time of our life with him. Um, he's up, uh, but, you know, he, I don't want to um, throw him under the bus on his age or anything, but, you know, uh, he just, uh, he, how long ago uh, was it that you, well, it, it, re, it wasn't. It wasn't too long ago. You decided you're going to become a soul winner, huh? It was about a year. About a year ago. Yeah, so he hasn't been. He hasn't been doing this all of his life. So he's just getting started. But tell him what you've experienced. <laughs> Amen. You got to hold, hold. 
Hold it up here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> first of all, since I've been with this team, I have seen miracles happen. I have felt the Lord just do wonders in my in my heart. And you cannot imagine what he's doing when he's right there with you. And he, it's the boldness. And I don't care what who you are or what you're doing. I don't care of the age. I'm 75 years old. I feel like I'm 40. But uh, I used to couldn't even walk from here to there to, uh, without catching my breath. But uh, when God healed me, he, he healed me. From, man, he, he healed me great. And uh, I can run. I can jump. I can stay up with anybody out here. And uh, when I started uh, meeting people, the first time, now, I was kind of leery about it, you know. I kind of, uh, well, I, no, I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. And I, and I got up there, and I, I led my first person to the Lord, you know. But the way I got it was uh, David was here with me. And, I mean, was there with me, and uh, he said, uh, uh, how, has anybody ever told you God loved you and has a wonderful plan for your life? And then uh, he got down to the prayer and everything. He says, well, my friend here, he's going to pray for y'all. <laughs> and I said, what? <laughs> so that's the way I got started. But it, that one, th that's all it took. That one. Amen. It put a feeling in you you would not believe. And uh, like today, uh, I, met, uh, I met a lady <laughs> that she was living in her car. And it, it was at a grocery store uh, and a dollar store and everything in between. And... Uh, I led her to the Lord, and uh, she, she was in tears. Uh, she was hurting real bad. And I said, uh, what, what, you, what would help you? And uh, she said, uh, I, I just can't move my car because I don't have no gas. And so the Lord already spoke to my heart. So I said, listen, I'm going to give you gas money. And what else do you think you might need? She had all of her stuff in the back seat. All of it. And, uh, I mean, it was, you, you, you'd have cried if you'd seen what I've seen. But anyway, I led her to the Lord. And then uh, as I was standing there, I was fixing to leave, and, and she kept saying, she said, please pray for me uh, that my, ch my children can receive this. And I said, where's your children? There they are. They're coming up this way. Perfect <laughs> timing. I got both of them. <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, they they were happy. I'm I'm talking about they was really thrilled. But I told them one thing. I said, uh, "You've got Jesus in your heart now. All you got to do is believe, and you receive. If you have doubts, you'll lose out. It's just that simple." And I said, "Whatever you say out of your mouth, whether there's money or, or something help for your car or something like that, or you got a friend in the hospital." All you got to do is believe when you say it. Don't change your mind on it. And, and, and when I said that, the, the, girl, the youngest one, she turned around and she said, Oh, wow. She said, Now I know how to do it. And, I, and she said, Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then uh, when I was walking away, I got thirsty and I went and got them uh, uh, three bottles of water and took it over, ice cold water, you know, and gave it to them. And that wasn't enough. So uh, I had a big old bag of, uh, of uh, snacks of every kind, you know, candy, uh, cookies, just tater chips and everything else. I went and got that whole bag and took it over. I said, hey, I'm going to bless you all with this. And I gave it to them. Man, they, they, that was it. I mean, that, Amen. that made Amen. Me. That's a divine appointment. Amen. A mom that. and her children get saved. Amen. I Same them, day. I uh, what chances is it that I live in Alabama and I'm sitting right here talking to you, yeah. praying to you and everything? And she said, God sent you. And I said, thank you, because I know I'm a messenger. And if I'm, the mes if I'm a messenger, then uh, here's what the question you've got to ask yourself. Am I the first messenger or am I the last messenger to be sent to you? Amen. And that's the one that really gets people. Yeah. I mean, that's a divine appointment. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> the, uh, you know, I mean, 
There's just, it, there's so many opportunities that we pass by every day. I think about all the people we walk, we walk by and we just, we miss the opportunity to share with them. And people are very receptive and open to, to the gospel, aren't they, Tara? So. They are. I actually expected people to spit in our face and, you know, be really rude to us. Um, but um, we were out at Lake Ella, Wendy and Nanette and I and Matt, I think. Yeah. And um, I got the opportunity. Now, Wendy introduced them so um, and introduced us, but then I got to share the Bible script with them, and it was a mom and a and a son, and I was kind of drawn to that because I have a 22-year-old son, and I remember those days just trying to keep him active and doing something. They were out by the lake um, playing, but it was a very rewarding experience, and uh, Dustin and Amy and the couple that used to be here in the church that did the outreach on Fridays, we used to go to Cascades Park, and we've had a lot of experiences there. It is kind of scary to get started, but once you do it a couple of times, um, it's kind of like a second second nature. Amen. Amen. And you've been a blessing. Tara's been a blessing. She's been helping us with the team all week and, and serving, and um, this has been awesome. And so, Nick, um, we've got all age groups. All shapes and sizes can win souls. So, Nick, tell them, tell them how things went with you. So, first off, I read the script myself because I was just like, what am I about to read? So, I read it, and it, it pierced me, um, and I was like, man, like, I can already tell by reading this it's going to just pierce the hearts of whoever I talk to. And I'm already kind of nervous because I've never done this before, but I was just like, you know what? God does not give me a spirit of fear. So I just started running, shooting from the hip to everybody. I actually, we encountered a fella. He was a younger guy working at Publix that apparently Thomas already talked to. So I was like, oh, great. You'll get the message the second time. Let's go. And, you know, he, like, I think the second time it really started hitting him because he was, like, he was about to cry. You know, he was, like, he just moved here. Um, and he was like, he felt alone. He felt like he had no one at all. Um, so I was like, dude, come to our church. Like, you know, God loves you. We love you. Like, you know, it's all good. And then we, uh, interacted with this older couple. Um, both of them were suffering from like arthritis and, you know, a bunch of other things. And you could tell the guy was really dealing with it because he was like, he had a cane. He was struggling immensely to walk and um we prayed healing um over him and just a rejuvenation of his bodies and his muscles and stuff literally like i'm talking to his wife but i can see him off in the distance he's like dancing a little bit and i was like i was like let's go amen so yeah (laughs) it works man it works amen praise god thank you nick the gospel is the power of god unto salvation to them that believe amen um, so tomorrow we're going to be here at, uh, to actually tomorrow is Thursday and then Thursday morning, Friday morning and Saturday morning, we will be right here at eight o'clock, uh, praying in the Holy ghost for one hour. And then we're going to do a quick training and we'll take you back out on the streets. If you can't come, um, in the morning, don't worry about it. Just call, uh, Amy or, or myself and we will connect with you. We're going to be out literally uh, for the, about the next 12 hours. You know, every day, if you, so anytime between 9 and 9, we can all hook up, and you can meet us somewhere. We won't throw you, throw you right out there. We can train you in this. If you can read, we can, uh, you can lead. <laughs> Amen. Um, but uh, God bless you all. Thank you so much for opening the church. Real quick, I, I just want, if y'all, if our team will just stand up real quick, uh, y'all just uh, give them a round of applause. Thank them for coming. We do appreciate y'all uh, doing what you've done this week. It's been phenomenal. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Richard. Great. I'm thankful for uh, Dustin and Amy facilitating this with us and uh, that they chose us. We opened up the gates wide for God to do whatever he wants to do. And it's never wrong to sow seed. And our city has been touched. I thank you guys for coming. 
and stirring up the evangelist in a lot of people, in all of us, uh, it's always good to be reminded. And it takes, you know, it, it takes all of us, it takes the different gifts in the body of Christ. And uh, one of the neglected, I believe one of the neglected gifts is the gift of an evangelist. Uh, there's five-fold ministry, five gifts that talks about in Ephesians. It talks about apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. And a lot of times uh, the evangelist is the one that seems to be missing in the mix a lot of times. And, and, and you can tell when someone, uh, Pastor Daniel's not here tonight, is he? Uh, but he uh, spoke last night. If you want to go back, I think we have it recorded. Got you. Um, but it blessed me. He, uh, he stirred some things up. He's definitely an evangelist. And an evangelist will stir things up. And may, you may not always be happy about it either. <laughs> uh, but the other gifts tend to do the same kind of thing, uh, especially prophets. And uh, so it's all good. And I'm thankful for uh, actually what God has been doing in our body and seeing some of this uh, turn loose because, like you heard the testimonies, there is nothing, I mean, I can get up in the pulpit and tell you things all the time, but until you actually get in situations where the Holy Spirit has to come on you or you can't do it, you don't know what it is to experience the anointing and power of God for yourself. We get salvation, we get how God works in our life, but then there's, there's something I think over the years that I've tried to minister to people and I, the best that I can teach it, that you know, we get the Holy Spirit, we get filled with the Holy Spirit, and we can enjoy that. And for the most part, the church consumes the presence of the Holy Spirit, the infilling power of the Holy Spirit, because they never externalize it. They never turn it around and take it into the power of God. And the power of God is released when, when, it, and when it comes out of us, not when it's just in us. Getting filled with the Holy Spirit, what I tell people all the time, filled with the Holy Spirit is for you. It's for you to get better. It's for you to get free. It's for you to get whole. The power of the Holy Spirit is for others. It's for the world. And uh, you want, a, you want a, a tremendous scripture that will teach you that. It's, it's Luke chapter 4, uh, where Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, full of the Holy Spirit. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And after 40 days, he returned in the power of the Spirit. That's specifically what the Word of God says. Luke chapter 4, verse 1 Full of the Holy Spirit, he was led into the wilderness where he was tempted for 40 days. Verse 14, it says, and he returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the miracles that Jesus began to do began at that time, not before. And a lot of times I think the church misses that. Uh, we, we, we become more consumers than anything else. And we're always internalized looking at our needs. And a lot of our time is spent on looking at our needs. That's why I think it's so important to... Look around, look at the world, because compassion will overtake you, and it will cause you to go beyond your needs. It'll cause you to do things without taking in consideration your own personal needs. And before you know it, your needs are taken care of because you're too compassionate for others, letting God use your hands and your feet, and God takes care of what's going on in your life. And it, it just happens. It works. I'm telling you, it works. It is, if you want to call it a formula, it is a proven formula that I have seen over the years as I've looked and followed the Lord. The more that I go and do for God, God takes care of me. Amen. The more I look at God fix this, God fix that, God fix the other, the more I get, in deep, get into my problems and I stay there and I can't see anything else. It blocks you from anything else. Uh, the best answer is always external. Best answer is always giving out. The best answer is always let it flow from us instead of flow and stop in us. So it, I like having uh, evangelists around. And Dustin and Amy are kind of our resident evangelists. That's what I call them. <laughs> and, and, and he's talked to me before. He's, he's apologetic a lot of times. And I say, man, dude, stir it up. Just stir it up. You got to have someone, you got, you know, the, the Bible says iron sharpens iron. When, you, when you've got giftings, you, you sharpen each other with your different giftings. 
God doesn't want us all the same. He wants us different. He made you different for a reason. Not all of us can do what they're doing all the time on the streets. But, hey, get out there and try it. You just don't know what will happen. Sometimes when you get in those places, you just see God do things. I've, I've told you stories over the years how God drug me through stuff. I would, I, would, I would put blockages up and, you know, get in a bus station or get in different places, and, and God would speak to me. I mean, I'd get visions. I'd get words of knowledge. I'd get all these different things that would come to me by the Spirit of God. And, and God would show me, even people said, you're going you're gonna to sit next to that person and you're going to talk to them about me. I said, God, that ain't going to happen. Never going to happen. There's thousands of people here. There's no chance they're even going to be on the same bus. Plus, it's a woman. I'm not talking to a woman. My wife's not with me. And I don't do that. I'm in Mexico. And I don't do that. Well, she got in the same line that I got in for the one bus out of a thousand. I mean, literally, there's hundreds of buses she got in the line on my bus, and I said, God, I will not talk to her. She would have to sit next to me for me to talk to her. That ain't going to happen. There's no way she got the seat next to me. Get on the bus, sit down. People are getting on. Seat next to me is empty. She comes and sits in it. So then I got real religious, and I took out my Bible. Not an iPad. I took out my real Bible because I would carry it and I would read when I was on the bus because I'm there for three hours. I'd read and sleep because that's the only time I got to do that. And I said, God, I am not talking to her. She's going to have to talk to me. And I opened my Bible figuring, I got the Bible open. Ain't nobody going to talk to you with the Bible open. And she looks over and she says, what are you reading? <laughs> So God cornered me all the time in situations when I was tired, when I didn't want to. I just ministered everything I had, every ounce that I had, and I just want to sleep or I just want to read. I just want, leave me alone. And God would always put me with places. So even if you don't want to go out in the streets, there's a lot of times that God will force you into situations. And sooner or later, you've got to give in to the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So anyway, I, I'm enjoying this because I think it's stirring us up and it can stir you in a lot of different ways. The important thing is that you get stirred. Amen. <laughs> so anyway, um, we're talking about hearing the voice of God. And I've done a, a few weeks on this, so we've, we've done uh, some, some things about it. We've talked about different aspects. And I wanted to uh, get into... One more in Acts chapter 16. Some of the things we've been mentioning about hearing the voice of God is that you have the ability to hear God's voice. That's a, that's a given. Everybody has the ability to hear God's voice. You cannot say, I can't hear God. And I hear people tell me sometimes, they say, I just can't hear God. I'm telling you, you've got to first of all change your attitude, the mind attitude, and understand that you can hear God. Because God has created you and he's made you able to hear him. And one of the things that we talked about is you don't have to be saved to hear God. Anybody can hear God. Let's, let's not get so religious that we think, well, the only way I can hear God is you got to be a Christian to hear God. People that don't know God hear God because that's how they come to God. Right? God calls them. And I've even heard people tell me, they say, well, God only speaks to unsaved people to get them saved. I, I don't believe that. I believe God speaks in a lot of ways to people that are unsaved as he's wooing them and loving them because they are all his creation just like we are, right? So anyway, that's a separate subject, but the point being, all of us have the ability to hear the voice of God. And then we also talked about we are his sheep. You, the attitude of your heart is very important as you're hearing the voice of God. So I talk about leaning into the Lord, leaning into his heart, not just leaning in to, to, to see what God will do, but leaning into the heart of God. In other words, not just to hear what we want to hear, but to hear the heartbeat of God. I want to know what God wants. And we don't think that way. That's usually a foreign thought to us is, 
We're, see, we come to God and we, we are focused on us. We're focused on what do I need? And, and a lot of times, even when we share the gospel, the first reaction of coming to the Lord is, God will help you with this. God will do this for you. God, and I've done this over the years. And it's very, it's, it's fine to do. That's what we do. God is here to help you. But there's a point as we come to the Lord and know the Lord that if you really want to lean in and hear his voice, you're going to have to start going after what does God need and not so much after what you need. Amen. I'm telling you, it opens up heaven when you start treating God in a different light and you start leaning in to hear the heartbeat of God. The heartbeat of God is people. The heartbeat of God is compassion. The heartbeat of God is loving humanity. And, and when you get closer to God's heart, you start hearing things that you can't make up. So anyway, you start leaning in, you start getting closer to the heart of God. So we talked about that. Let's not just seek after the hand of God. We're seeking after the ways of God. And, and when we seek after the ways of God, it's not so much uh, putting us in conflict. Every time uh, you know, we pray for the sick, and we say, well, I don't know, God, God doesn't heal this one. God makes this one sick. God uh, heals this one. No, none of that's true. We just don't know God. Well, how can you say that God wants to heal everybody? Because I know God. And I get close enough to hear his voice, to hear what is God's desire, what, is, what does God want. I can't explain why some don't get healed. It's not my problem. It's just like uh, Daniel mentioned last night. I can't save anybody. You are not responsible to heal. You're not responsible to deliver. You're not responsible to save anybody. All we're doing is being a mouthpiece. We're just being an instrument of the Lord, being a vessel for His glory to be displayed around us to bring something into the situation. It is up to God to do the rest. I don't understand why some people don't get, don't get healed, but I'm going to pray for all of them. I can't go around and figure out, well, you're not supposed to get healed and you are. I'm going to pray for everybody because the only word that I know that I hear from God is lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And I can't find a negative in there. I can't find a caveat where it says lay hands on the sick and you'll get 50%. I don't see it in the word of God anywhere, but we wrestle with that all the time. So if we lean in, you hear what I'm saying? We lean in and we get the heart of God. We're learning his ways, not just learning what his hand can deliver from time to time. I'll tell you something more. God wants to do more miracles than we have yet seen. But we've got to get some of the blockages out of the way that we just don't believe in miracles. I know you're not responding very much with that statement, but I'm telling you it's the truth. We just, we have such a, 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 we're set up to not believe because for so long we have not seen. <clears throat> I could, I'll never forget, we, we came back from Mexico and we're working, I ended up being a youth pastor at a church for a little while, I was, I was the IBM, how, how do you say that in English, I was, the, I did everything. Whatever, any, whatever was left undone, I did it. I was the pastor that picked up all the, the leftovers, whatever was going on. And I ended up being the youth pastor for a while. And we had a shut-in at New Year's Eve. And I went and rented a rec center. And we had like 150 kids. And we shut in. And we had pizzas. We had subs. And we had candy. And we had sugar. So they'd bounce off the walls the entire night because they were staying up all night playing games and you know, gymnasium, and we had a concert, and I told my young people, I said, I want you to put together some of the rockiest songs that you can put together. I don't want anything sweet and soft. I want everything loud and in their face, and, and then I'm going to preach, and, and I got in there, and, and I spoke for about 10 minutes. Power of God fell on those kids, and over 50 of these kids gave their heart to the Lord, and I mean, they were just all over the place. Power of God went all night long, all New Year's night long, 
to where some of the kids would come up and they say, I don't know what's happening. They were shaking under the power of God. And I had to explain to them, sweetheart, this is the Holy Spirit. He's touching your life. Just enjoy it. But I've never experienced it. It's fun, right? Yeah, but I don't know what it is. Just enjoy it. All night, the power of God hitting these kids. So for months, I go later, I play racquetball uh, with some of the guys in church. And at the time, the older guys, I was younger. And uh, it's not that long ago, but we're, <laughs> we're, playing, we're playing racquetball. And, and one of the guys, I mean, he was in his 70s, and he, and, he's, and he stops. He grabs the ball. We just got through with a shot or something. He says, man, it was so amazing, all of those kids that gave their heart to the Lord. And I just, I grabbed the ball, and I just turned, and I looked at him, and I said, you need to explain to me why you, after three months, keep saying to me how amazing it is to have seen that many kids get saved. He said, Richard, you don't understand. We've had these events over the last several years, and we've never seen but one kid get saved, maybe. And in one night, we saw at least 50. We've never seen that before. And Holy Spirit said to me, what most people have never seen, they cannot believe for. And it opened their eyes to where they could never go back. Listen, you can't go back when you see the move of God like that. You can't go back to, well, nothing happened. You can't go back to it. Anyway, I'm getting off because the evangelist is stirring me up. But, but there's something about seeing and being able to look at it and say, well, it's, it's hard. I can't unsee that. Does that make sense? I can't unsee what God did. So you can tell me all you want that God doesn't do this or God doesn't do that or God can't move this way or God's not around. But I'm telling you I've already seen it, so it's too late. It's like when we got the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, we had people try to talk us out of it. And, and I said, I said, it's, it's too late. You know, once you've experienced that, it's anyway. So I'm talking about hearing the voice of God. And this is, this is playing into it. But, but we hear the voice of God. You, 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 you lean in and you start learning the ways of God. And your expectations start going up. Your expectations begin to change because you start knowing what God is, not just what He'll do. You get to know who He is. Amen. And when you get to know who He is, it's like the, the little, I'll just play off that little card they talk about. Did you know God loves you? Well, that's who God is. Amen. When someone says to me, I don't know, you know, God punishes, uh, that ain't God. It's like I, different times when people have tried to put a wedge between Darlene and I coming against the work of God. And they'll come and tell me, they said, well, your wife said this. I said, no, she didn't. I said, let's just get her on the phone and I'll prove to you that she did not say what you just told me she said. Because I know her. And that would not have come out of her mouth. Well, do we know God that way? When people say certain things about God, I can say, you know what? I, I know God. I don't know that you know God, but I know God. And I've heard him and I've talked with God. And I know God would not say that. Amen. It was not even a few weeks ago. Somebody, somebody was in our, one of the groups we were in. I think we were praying up here. And, and they said something. And I looked at him and I said, whoa, stop. God never said that. That's a lie. You're believing a lie. You cannot say that. That is not what God says. Well, how do you know? Because I know God. I know what he's saying. I know what he says in his word. So there's a leaning in and, and, and learning to, to be attentive and tuned in to the voice of God, to hear his voice, to hear him speaking. So uh, we, we talked about a little bit of that. We talked about how... Uh, Samuel started hearing the word of God uh, when he was working with Eli. He was working in the temple, 
And Samuel had heard the voice of God. God spoke to him and called him Samuel. And he went to Eli three times. And Eli each time says, go back to bed. You, 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 don't, you didn't hear anything. And he kept thinking it was Eli, but it wasn't. It was, it was God. He didn't recognize yet the voice of God. But after the third time, Eli says, I know what's going on. Because Eli had forgotten how the voice of God was because it said there was no open vision and the word of God was scarce. And Eli says, go back this time and say, here am I, your servant. Putting himself, bringing himself to a place of humility, bringing himself to a place of opening his heart and saying, God, I'm here to listen. And that's where we talked a lot about leaning in and just, just, getting, just, just getting before the Lord and coming in with humility. Uh, and and I, I can talk about that a lot because pride blocks the voice of God in your life. And a lot of times, here's another thing, pride will mix with idolatry in hearing the voice of God. And we will put things, idols, before God and mix the voice of God with the idols that we have in our life. I don't know if that makes sense. You can chew on that one. You may have to chew on it for a little while. I'll give you, I'll give you a couple examples. When someone's praying for something they really want, that thing that they're praying for becomes an idol as they're trying to hear the voice of God about that thing. I'll, I'll do it like this. Here's the thing. Now lift it up. Lord, I'm lifting this up to you and I'm praying, God, I want to know what your will is about this thing. But the thing is between me and God. And it's not easy to hear the voice with clarity because my heart is fixated on the thing. And that has always, to me, been an interference as I'm seeking to hear the voice of God and I put a thing out there, I've got to get away from the thing. In order to hear with clarity what God's will is, what God's speaking to me about that situation, that thing, I've got to take it out of the way because it becomes an idol that stands up before God. We always think of idols as being something else. And idols, idols is anything you let lift up in your heart. Young people lift up getting into a relationship as they're praying and seeking the Lord. And they get into wrong relationships because the thing, the relationship is more important than God. And they can't fixate on God at all. They fixate on the person and all they can see is the person. And so, of course, every dream they have is about the person. Everything they have going on is about the person. And they can't see with clarity to hear the voice of God, whether it's saying yes or no, because they're fixed on that person rather than fixed on God. You say, well, what are you supposed to do? I mean, I can give you a lot of... One of the greatest examples, I remember we took a team to Haiti and, and went there and, and there was a missionary there that was working there, two missionaries, and one of them, this young man, he was, at the time, I was in my 20s, he was, he was early 30s, never married, been on a mission field in Africa, and then as he was growing up, they moved to Haiti, and he became a missionary himself in Haiti as a single man and was there teaching the Word of God and ministering to the people and doing things, and we took a group to be with him, and well, with another missionary, and he was there with this other missionary at the same time. And as we're there, I had a young lady in my group that had never married, and she had she had waited, and she was looking for whatever God wanted, but she's following the Lord. She goes up with us on this trip to Haiti. She's in her early 30s. She's like 31, 32, I believe at the time, maybe 33. And we get there, and this young man sees her. And this young lady sees him. And he comes up to me. I'm 26, somewhere around 26. He's 30-ish. He's missionary, full-time ministry, you know, all this stuff. 
He comes to me and said, says, Richard, may I ask so-and-so out for a date? I said, we're in Haiti on a mission trip. <laughs> I said, but yeah, you can do it. And so, I mean, their date was very simple, very, very pure, and, and uh, I don't even remember what they did. I think they went and got coffee or something and, for a little bit, and he had to be translating for us and all that stuff, so he was with the group the whole time. Well, they fell in love within that week that we were there and got married two months later. I had three children, went to Mexico, uh, not Mexico, went to Africa uh, as missionaries again, and... Uh, and lived their life. And, and it was like neither of them, they just waited on the Lord. You hear what I'm saying? They, they put their lives, they didn't put their lives on hold. They put their lives in God. And they went after God. And, and, I, and I, I just, I know this to be true. I just know it to be true. You cannot outdo God in your life if you will you will push into him and you will move into him with all that you've got and give him your life he will give you the desires of your heart I know that's a big subject and I've talked with the young people here at different times over some of these things I just I just know I know with all my heart that God loves us and he has your best in mind. And you can't outgive God. You can't put your life out there and God not do something for you that will amaze you and shock you. So as we're hearing the voice of God, you, you've got you've to be careful for that. Number one, pride. Pride will cause you to hear God's voice and mix it with yourself. Uh, I know there's been times that God's spoken and I add to what he speaks. My, my mistakes that I've made over the years hearing the voice of God have been when I add to what God says to me. In other words, I know what God's saying. God spoke to me and I know what he says, so I add my interpretation to what he says. And it's usually 100% wrong. Because it came out of a place of pride. God would speak and then, you know, it's like, well, God said this, so he wants to do all this. No, that's not what I said. I said I would do this. You added the rest. So humility is of great importance. Watching out for the idolatry, having things, get them, get them out of the way. Because we, we let it interfere. When you get fixated on things in your life, going after things, it, it's amazing how that will interfere with how you hear the voice of God. And so then, <clears throat> those, are, those are a few, I think, major obstacles to hearing the voice of God with clarity. Remember one of the things we said early on as I was teaching this, we want to hear God's voice clearly. We don't want to just hear His voice partially. We want to hear it clearly. I want precision in my hearing of God. I want to hear Him accurately. I want to be led by the Holy Spirit with accuracy in my walk with God. So, uh, you know, that, that's a big part of it. So now, let me bring in... Which part do I want to bring in? Well, here, here's a good one. Um, well, on top of that, another, another thing that will be an obstacle is disobedience. That's kind of a given, right? When we get into disobedience about things, it, it blocks you from hearing the voice of God. And many times you've got to go back to where you lost it in order to pick it up again. <clears throat> Um, I think I always am going in one direction and I end up in another. So I'm trying to figure out where I need to go. Let's read Acts 16, verse 6 through 10.
Acts 16, verse 6 says, Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So this scripture, along with some others uh, in, in the journeys of Paul, uh, one of the things that it really speaks to me about is how we are nudged by the Holy Spirit in our life. And one of the things that we were talking about as we hear the voice of God is the Holy Spirit has emotions, right? The Holy Spirit has emotions. The Holy Spirit is in us. And one of the things that I've been seeing more and more of late is that we're the temple. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit inhabits this temple, inhabits this body. We can feel the Holy Spirit. So... What this is saying here, this has given us some indicators because we think of Paul. Well, Paul heard the voice of God. God spoke to him very clearly. Well, this shows us how God was speaking to Paul as he's traveling. He's feeling nudged by the Holy Spirit. It actually says in, in, in more than one time, it says, we were being, being kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in, in the province of Asia. What does that look like? Being kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching in a place. What does that look like in our life? Can we apply that to our life as we're hearing the voice of God, as we're walking through life? Absolutely. There's times that you'll, you'll be nudged one way or another by the Holy Spirit. As, 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 you're, as you're moving through life, you can be nudged. You can have, you can have this, this, this feeling, I just, I just don't, I'm not clear. I'm, not re, I'm, I'm getting a lot of resistance. I've had that very thing happen. Even as I've gone into places, like I'm not supposed to preach here. I'm not, something's not right. I can't, I can't get free. I can't, I'm having trouble. It's just, this is not working. And it's not because I'm in a wrong place. It's not because I'm in a bad place. It's because God doesn't want me there. He wants me somewhere else. And you learn to, 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 to listen, to hear the nudges, to feel the nudges of the Holy Spirit. So Paul's saying they were, they were, they were prohibited from going and preaching in that area. Now, I'll give you a little backstory on this. Paul had a great desire in his heart. He had a desire to go preach in Asia. So, as Paul is traveling, if I put up a map, which I don't have tonight, but you can you, just trust me on this one. You can look it up, but trust me on this. As Paul is making this trip, he's traveling, and he's and he's going. I would say he's going east but he wants to go north into Asia. And every time he starts turning north, the Holy Spirit prohibits him. He stops him. How does he stop him? Does, do, we, do we understand what's going on there? He didn't hear a voice. What's that? Yeah, things, things don't work out. But what else, was, what else can you see from that? What else do you think was going on? Uncomfortable. He felt it. I mean, there, there was something, like I said, we can feel the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is, Paul's not feeling well. It's like he's feeling resistance in himself, right? Something's going on. It's like, I just, this doesn't feel right. Now, Paul wanted to go there. Why? Because it was one of his desires to travel to Asia and preach in Asia. Paul wanted to do that. With everything that was in him, he wanted to do that. So they, they're going east. He's trying to turn north. The Holy Spirit's prohibiting him. He doesn't feel peace. So he starts going east again. And then he wants to go north again. Right? When they came to board of Mysia, see, they had to make decisions all along the way. They're making decisions. Where do we go next? He had no direction. His direction was on the fly. So they get to Mysia, and they try to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. 
We don't know if there are other circumstances that are taking place. It just didn't feel right. Holy Spirit didn't allow them to. Maybe things just weren't working right. Maybe they didn't have a right contact. I don't know. There's a lot of things that could have taken place that, that, that became integrated in this whole situation. But I think the number one thing that happened was he didn't feel it by the Holy Spirit. That inner voice is what I'm talking about. There's an inner voice that many times you don't recognize what God's saying, but you feel what God is saying, and he directs your steps as you're going. So they had resistance once again. They couldn't go in there. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. Now, if you look at the map, Troas is on the coast. When you get to Troas, you got to make a decision. You either turn back or you pay for a boat, a ship, to take you across. That's a bigger decision. So they sleep on it. And during the night, Paul has a vision, right? He's got this dream vision. I think it calls it a vision. He'd seen a vision. <clears throat> and in the vision, he saw this man cross the water, calling, come over. So Paul gets up, and he pretty much just tells everybody, and I had this, this vivid dream. I had this vision. This guy calling from Macedonia. Now, the reason I know that Paul didn't say, God told me that we're going to Macedonia, is because it says, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. They talked about it. They talked about what he felt, what he saw. And they talked about it. They said, well, we've got a choice. We turn back or we take this little nudge. We buy passage and we go over to Macedonia, which is where Corinthians, uh, the Corinthian church is, the Philippi church, the Thessalonian church, all of those churches were over in that area. So they go over there feeling that God is leading them. Do you follow what I'm talking about? There's this feeling. There's, they didn't have clarity of what God actually said, but they were being led by the Holy Spirit and the voice of the Lord leading them in their daily steps and circumstances and opportunities, and they're looking around and choosing what to do by what the Holy Spirit is making them feel on the inside and nudging them to do. The primary goal never changed, to go preach the gospel. The only thing that changed was the direction. Now let me give you a little secret. Uh, Later on, Paul, after this, chapter 19, Paul goes back to past Troas to Ephesus. And in Ephesus is where there's 12 men that he prays for. They receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They get saved, right? And they get rebaptized, not rebaptized, they get baptized in the name of Jesus type thing. And they start prophesying. And Paul is there for the space of, I think, a couple years. And there's a little verse in there in Acts chapter 19 that says, and all of Asia was reached. Paul never went to Asia. But his desire gave birth to a vision. And someone else carried out that vision. Because Paul was obedient to the Holy Spirit. Instead of reaching a couple cities in Asia, all of Asia was reached because he stayed obedient and went where God sent him because he was being nudged by the Holy Spirit. You follow, follow that? I'm, I'm, what I'm showing you is it's so easy to follow the Holy Spirit and to hear the voice of God inside of us. It's not always dependent on hearing the exact words. Many times it's just being nudged by the Holy Spirit or just starting, just stepping out. I think Nanette said it earlier. She, took, she dipped her toe in and, and found that it felt good. That happens a lot. That happens a lot in life. You just, you, you, you go for things. And, and, and I, I know I was in, um, I guess I was in Bangkok, <clears throat> Bangkok or an, another place, um, Myanmar. 
And I was with a group, and, and the group I was with, a bunch of pastors from America, and I was from Mexico at the time, and not because, I mean, I just didn't have finances. Like, they had big churches in, in America. I had a big church in Mexico, but we didn't have the same money that they had, like all their, they pull out a credit card and do whatever they want to do. I was looking to share a room with somebody, you know, while we're over there because I just, I had to watch it a little bit. I got my family back home and this was a giant leap of faith for me to travel to Asia from Mexico as a missionary. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm over there and I had uh, made plans to go through Japan on the way, on the return back. And I knew a missionary from Mexico that was in Japan, the north part of Japan. And we're in this place in uh, Kathmandu is where we were. And the lead pastor of the team says to us as a group, we'd get together and meet every night, and they try to figure out who was going to preach. And, and most of these guys were pretty much, uh, the lead pastor would say, well, tomorrow we got this schedule. We've got, we need someone to preach this and preach this and preach this. And, and they would, the per, people that were assigned to it, they would say, well, I really wanted to go sightseeing at that hour. So, and I said, well, I, I'll preach. And so I got to preach a lot more than I was supposed to preach, which was why I went. While they went sightseeing or buying a rug to ship home and, and all this stuff, I, I got to preach the Word of God to these people and a, a room of 500 leaders from all, of, all over the nation. And, and, and I mean, I enjoyed that more than sightseeing. But uh, I, I, I took, every time they couldn't do it, I said, I, I, I'm here, I'll do it. Here I am, <laughs> eme aquí, we say in Spanish. Here I am, let me do it. And, uh, but after a day, I think it was a day or two, we were supposed to go the whole week, the lead pastor says, something's not working here. And he was right, it wasn't working because the people that he had contacted were just taking his money. Americans always think money fixes everything. And they sent money in advance to set up all these meetings and all this money. And that kind of stuff just never works. You can't do things like that. And, and they were taking them to the cleaners. I mean, literally, I won't go into all the details. They were taking them to the cleaners. So the main pastor says, says to us, as well, I'm canceling the meetings. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do? I mean, just sit here for the next three, four days. No transportation, no nothing. It's just alone. I said, God, what do you want to do? And so I felt, I felt, I said, I got back to the hotel and I, and I said, I'm, I'm going to call the guy in, in Japan. I don't know if he'll even answer. I don't even know if he's in town. I'm not supposed to be there till Saturday. This is Tuesday and uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. And I call him up. He answers the phone. I said, Rodolfo, I said, I need to come early. Can I come early? He said, yeah, no problem. Just let me know when you're coming. I said, okay, hung up. I go down to the, the desk to help for travel, and they switched my travel uh, itinerary for me to fly earlier. It, was, it worked out. And I go flying into Sapporo, and uh, I get there. He picks me up at the airport, and he says, he says you got to speak in about two hours. I said, what are you talking about speaking two hours? He said, yeah, you're, you're on to speak in two hours at Christ for the Nations. And I said... I wasn't supposed to be here till Saturday. How am I supposed to speak in two hours? He said, you've been scheduled to speak in two hours for two months. The Holy Spirit had already had that all lined up, had the other stuff not happen. And, and if I would have just said, oh, my gosh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to sit here. I guess I'm just going to do nothing. Just sit at this hotel for three days and, and go on with the ticket and get there when I get there. Instead of listening and feeling the Holy Spirit prompt me, Call him. Call him. And when he answered the phone, it was like, okay, God, I know you're here. I know you're in this. It's like the vision. Come on over. And I get there, and I had a blast in Japan being freed from the American pastors. I was in heaven. <laughs> Don't hear me wrong, but it was very freeing. And, and I got over there, and there was a move of God as we were there. In this, I was just in this small church, and man, the power of God just hit. I was, I was getting visions. I would go, go to the bed at night, and I'd get visions. God would just speak to me words and clarity. I mean, it was like I was walking in the glory for five days and ate sushi 
in the, in, in the subway. <laughs> There's no sushi like sushi in Japan. But um, I tell you things like that because that's what was going on with Paul. He was being led by the Holy Spirit. We don't always know. You just take some risks. You just step out sometimes and just see what will happen. And then God brings confirmation. God brought confirmation when they got to Troas. He brought confirmation. And from there, they were able to step out onto the boat and go over to where they were supposed to go. And the rest is history, right? But they concluded that God wanted them to go. They had no idea what was going to happen. God didn't tell them everything was going to take place. He just gave them a little nudge. So I just want to encourage you. Don't always dismiss the nudges. Because the Holy Spirit will lead you with that inner voice. The inner voice of the Holy Spirit. And, and I want to say to you that probably the most reliable part of hearing from God is that inner voice. It's, it's, it's the one thing you need to really get in tune with as you're walking through life. And I can go on and on. There's scripture in, in Galatians that says... As, as we live by, live by the Spirit, we should also walk by the Spirit. In other words, we're, we're full of the Holy Spirit, but then there's a walking out with the Holy Spirit. It's not just, I got the Holy Spirit, now we walk with the Holy Spirit, right? There's a walking it out. So I just want to encourage you, uh, just press in as you're listening to the voice of God. Let some of these other things, if they're, if they're interfering in your life, put them aside and go after God with purity. Just go after Him. Not with an agenda, not trying to figure things out all the time. And just follow His leading. And you'll move into places of peace. You'll move into places of abundance. You'll move into places of rest. Uh, I, I'm, I'm convinced, and, and I give this as counsel all the time, we should always be living out of a place of quietness and rest. We should never be living out of a place of agitation and stress. Amen. I can take the word back, never. But that's not what God wants for us. Right? It's not an easy thing to always learn, but to find a place of, of resting in the Lord, and then we move out of that place of rest, and we follow Him in that rest and that peace. And you know that's right. When you hear it, it, it it's right. You hear it in your spirit, and you know God wants you to work out of a place of rest. Anyway, I'll entertain a couple questions real quick. What's that? Oh, it's up here. Run, Vince, run. We can hear Vince. <laughs> so I don't know if it's a question as much as it is a thought. So as we're talking about, um, you know, Philippians talks about God purposes in our heart to will and to do. And that can clash with the Holy Spirit in that you feel that you want to do something in your heart and it lines up with God's word. But when... It may not be the right time, and the Holy Spirit is nudging you differently. We could, well, at least I could, get a little confused on, okay, is it me saying no, yes, not sure, or is it the Holy Spirit because this is what's in my heart? Know what I'm saying? Uh, you, a think, conundrum, per se. Yeah. Um, there's there's usually a disconnect between hearing God and timing. The timing of a thing. Yeah. In us, we we have I think we have the hardest time when we're hearing the voice of the Lord about things to do. Our the hardest thing for us to determine is God's timing. That's probably yeah. a subject that I should address more. Yeah, because at another that, time. That would be a good one. And then the <coughs> other one, if no one else has something right this second. Well, is the um, petitioning, right? God tells us to bring our petition to him. And so 
when you're petitioning for this thing that you hold up in front of him, it seems to not contradict, but a lack of a better term right now. You know, it's just like a counterpoint to moving that thing out of the way. Yeah, but there's a difference. I, I would, I would, I know what you're saying, and I would say there's there's a big difference between bringing the petition before the Lord and bringing the thing before the Lord. In other words, the petition. If I'm, if I'm, <clears throat> I'm just trying to figure out, God, what what do you want me to do? in this situation and rest in it and petition him with Lord I have this need I lay it at your feet and leave it and not constantly God I have this need constantly 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 just leave it and let God work it out for you but isn't that what he wanted us to do when he talked about the neighbor who persistently knocks on you know there are times I yeah guess, I where think there's a little difference I mean how can I'm not I explain? trying to be difficult. I'm no, I understand. I, there is, I think there's a difference between seeking in that way and petitioning. Uh, the, the scripture you're talking about when it talks about petitioning is in Philipp, Philippians. And it says petition with thanksgiving, which means <clears throat> as we petition the Lord, we put it in his hands, we give him thanks for it being done. It's, it's finished. The persistence I think deals with something different where it's interceding and it's a different, we're coming at the Lord, going at something differently as we're seeking, we're asking, we're persistently going after it. But it's not so we can consume. It's not just for a thing we need. I think, I think it's totally different. And we could talk mm -hmm. about that more, but I think there's a big difference because it's, it talks about bringing our petitions, bringing our needs before the Lord and laying them there. And, and, and I can't remember how the scripture goes right now, but I know it does say with thanksgiving, Giving, which means yeah. it's done. Lord, I thank you that this is it's taken care of. I, I, I put it in your hands. It's taken care of. I don't need to come back to it. I don't need to spend hours on my face over this thing. It's taken care of. Okay. And I just trust him for it. So if you don't mind, just one more. Just <laughs> And then I'll be quiet. So this is more of, um, I've, I was studying uh, Colossians. And it has, it, it seems to just roll up into everything that you're saying about hearing. But um, this particular uh, verse just seems to give us so much, so much more than I know that we have which is, it says, um, for in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And you have been given full fullness in the, oh, sorry, I can't see. Don't have my glasses, so. Um, yeah, can you hold that, please? Thank you. And we have been given fullness in Christ, who, who is head of over, who's head of over every power and authority. So I'll read that again. Sorry, guys, left the glasses home, getting old. Uh, for in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. So it's saying to me that all of God the Father is in Christ, right? Everything that he has is The Godhead is, yep. Okay. And we, you, have been given fullness in Christ, the Godhead's in us. <clears throat> we have been given. So therefore, all that power and authority that he has is in us. We have. Yep. Absolutely. Oh, that all, we could know it. Yes. And that's, that's what exploded. Yep. Because. Um, that our eyes would be open to understand who actually lives in us. And we have it. Yes, I've we do. read this, you know. We have this treasure in earthen have. vessels. Amen. But if we only knew because it talked about him making a spectacle yep. of the enemy on the cross, so if Satan we, really if has If we only no knew our true authority and our true standing, mm -hmm. there would be a lot of things changed. And maybe, the reason I brought that up, is maybe we can talk about what we truly have 
who we are and how we sit in the heavenly places with God because I think yeah. if we know what we own in Christ, maybe I, I can only speak for myself and some others who may, will learn that we have so much power beyond what we see, but it's what we don't see that we're not using that is fully available to oh, yeah. us. It's anyway. what we ignore. My that people, would be a good off. I think it's, I think it's, um, is it Hosea? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It, it's what, it's what we don't know. It, it is hurting you. And, and, and we've got to, we've got to figure it out. All right. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, just a, a great week so far. And thank you, Lord, for all the souls that have been touched in Tallahassee during this week. Lord, the thousands of people that have heard that you love them, Lord, and that were prayed for. And Lord, we thank you that you bring forth the harvest. Lord, it's your harvest. And we thank you that you bring forth the fruit, Lord, for all of that seed sown. Lord, we put that in your hands, and we thank you, Lord, that you bring multiplication, Lord, in people's lives, that they see your hand delivering them in situations, and they even see miraculous things happen because now they're calling upon your name, and the things that they can't explain because you are invading their space. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for your goodness we thank you for your glory shed abroad in our hearts, Lord, and all around us. And I thank you for filling your people tonight, Lord, with even more holy boldness in you as they seek after you. And I thank you, Lord, that even hearing you becomes easier and easier the closer we get, Lord. And you show us things that will wow us in the coming days. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Um, greet somebody before you get away. Have a great evening and uh, good night.